More layoffs last week in the newspaper business. Consolidation, mergers and closures too. Are we at a fundamental change point in the way we consume information? Our media panel has its take on that. Margot Goodhand, until last month, the editor of the Edmonton Journal. Chris Waddell is a journalism professor at Carleton University. Brody Fenlon is acting director of digital news here at CBC News. And Sachi Cole is a writer at BuzzFeed Canada. Their thoughts in a moment, but first this background. It's brutal out there. Just last Friday, after 141 years, the Nanaimo Daily News stopped printing. And on the other side of the country, so did the Guelph Mercury, the latest victims of a changing world. Look at this. In 2008, there were 135 dailies in Canada. By 2011, the number had dropped to 122. By 2014, down to 104. In the last year alone, more than 600 journalists were laid off by newspapers, touching all parts of the country. Four papers have stopped printing and now offer only digital editions. Metro Regina, Saskatoon, Guelph and London. And Quebec's once mighty La Presse only offers a print edition on Saturdays. Advertising tells part of the why on this. Look at this graphic. In 2005, newspapers led the way in dollars earned from advertising, just ahead of television, well ahead of radio, and the internet was a distant fifth behind magazines. But that's history, really old history. By 2014, the internet was way out front, and newspapers were running third and fading fast. It's not a pretty picture, and the questions loom large. What's the impact? Does journalism suffer? Should print die? Big questions. Let's try for some answers. So, Margo, I'm, I'm going to start with you, because you were hit personally. You, you're one of those layoffs, <laughs> former editor-in-chief of the Edmonton Journal. What, What's your sense? What's going on? What's happening? Well, it's been happening for a decade. You know, the advertising revenues have gone down and the readership, print readership, has gone down as everybody flocks to the Internet, which is perfectly normal. And that kind of disruption has happened in virtually every other industry that I can think of, broadcasting and, you know, uh, everything else. But the problem is that in the managing of the decline over the 10 years, uh, the revenues have gone down so far that I think we are starting, we're at a bit of a tipping point. I really do believe that some of the papers, like the Guelph Mercury record, just can't sustain um, the losses. And if you are dealing with a particularly debt-ridden company... That, like Postmedia. Like Postmedia, then you're, you're dealing with, you're, you're, you're so challenged by the debt, then the debt payments, that even if you are making money, as the Edmonton Journal was and many of the papers, have been, they can't sustain that c continual decline. And, you know, so we'll, we'll see how it goes, but um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what's been happening. Well, good luck to you. Thanks. <laughs> Chris, how do you explain the decline, all of these closing and shrinking newspapers? Yeah, I would, dis I would agree completely with what Margot has to say and add a couple of other things. Um, the graphic you showed of internet advertising going up and newspaper advertising going down, the problem for a lot of the mainstream media is that internet advertising revenue isn't going to them, it's going to the Google and the Facebooks and it's going to them because they can target and now micro target people so they can deliver messages on when you do a Google search when you when you call up even the New York Times uh, website you get a, a local ad placed by Google so so uh, the media companies have not been good at, uh, at at dealing with that beyond that I think we also suffer from from conglomerate ownership in that that uh, as you move away from advertising you have to find revenue from somewhere else the other the most obvious obvious place is readers. Uh, but readers, listeners and viewers are disappearing, which suggests that they don't think the material that news organizations are putting out, and I think it's wrong to call them newspapers these days, they're news organizations, mm -hmm. just like CBC isn't a broadcaster. Um, if you look just at their, broadcast. just broadcast. <laughs> if you look at their web, if you look at their web presence. But, but what you need to survive is you need a, a, a product, I think, that can be targeted to local audiences because that's what people will likely pay money for. But if you have a conglomerate ownership, whether it's in broadcasting, or whether it's radio, television, or print, uh, they want their the way they make money is standardization, reducing everything, redu centralized distribute, centralized everything, and that reduces the ability for individual um, creativity to attract and, readers and viewers and, and yeah. to target people target local audiences yeah so Brody you, you've worked on both sides of the mm -hmm. paper digital divide uh, how do you see how do you explain this decline 
Well, I agree that, uh, you know, this is a freight train that has been long coming, yeah. and, and everyone saw it and everyone knew it. I mean, it, we, we see it uh, a tipping point maybe this week or the last couple of weeks, but really it's been a long time coming. And, and it is easy to couch quarterback uh, what is really a difficult and complex industry dealing with fundamental changes in how the consumer uses uh, the product. But having said that, I think you know we, we should also talk a little bit about newspapers themselves, uh, and they have some responsibility. And I say that as somebody who worked at a local newspaper. I think um, you know these papers made a ton of money mm -hmm. in the 60s and 70s and 80s. And when the squeeze kind of set in in the 90s, they cut uh, pretty ruthlessly, and especially in local markets. So you, you had a degradation of the product, and. That would be from bureaus being cut to not as many beat reporters to more wire copy. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, you had these papers cling on to the old model, which really did make money. And we saw it in that chart, uh, tons of money in print, rev or print advertising <coughs> right through the mid 2000s. But they clung to it philosophically, financially, and they couldn't pivot in time for the digital change that they saw coming. So Sachi, I mean, should the papers have seen this coming? <laughs> I mean, probably. I feel like a lot of us probably saw it coming. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think if we spend that much time sort of romanticizing something like a print product, you're going to end up feeling really disappointed when it can't survive that long. And of course, they should have seen it coming. But are papers still relevant? Like, is there still a place for... It, it probably depends on who you are. I don't think for my generation, it is. Because they don't adapt and they don't change. And, and, and I think what you see... Uh, within newspaper companies that are trying to adapt, they're still holding on to certain values and certain ideologies that come with being a newspaper. And I think you see that with how uh, Torstar is doing uh, the Star Touch uh, app, which I think actually is basically just a newspaper that they've wedged into an internet and is not quite so working. Is fine, as far as you're concerned? But if you look at what's happening at the press, the press has got 180,000 readers of the tablet. It's gone up to 240,000 sure. since they killed the but print version. That's not in English. That's not an English language. language. Yeah, yeah. It's a French ah. The diaspora in the, in mm -hmm. the West loves La Presse yeah. because it's French news. Sure. It's got such a great yeah. niche. Yeah, yeah. but, but I, I'm not convinced that it's not marketable on a broader basis. It's I, not, I, I was it's not say, marketable. It's a matter of how they've built it. And I think yeah. the way that they've built it hasn't been appealing to the kinds of people that they should be wanting I to think, appeal I to. Mean, I'm just to say, I think doing digital news in the English language market has challenges that, that the Quebec market would, would, won't face. And, and the, the challenge that every paper and every publisher, any media company doing English language news is that they face the world and the world's biggest players, not to mention everyone else who's just a publisher in their own right on social media. And, and uh, so I, I do think actually that there is a, it is a different scenario in, in English Canada. But beyond that though, Sachi, are you arguing that there's nothing really lost, like big deal if it just moves into no, digital? I mean, some, obviously Other than is the Marcos <laughs> of the world and the I tactile think, of the paper. Like, <laughs> this poor in terms of the journalism, is, is nothing lost? Yeah, I mean, you lose local coverage, which isn't good. I mean, nobody, nobody wants to lose that you lose a ton of stories you you lose coverage in regions that are maybe a little more uh, separate from big cities like where we are right now uh, you see this with how um, how coverage happens in 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 places like the LGBT community where those small community papers that were free and available on a street corner don't exist anymore but, but, but the truth is we've lost local coverage over the last few years substantially yeah. already I mean yeah, yeah. with the cutbacks the Sun papers and the other papers that the post media got a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago when they bought them they'd been gutted by Quebec Corps before they took them over so the papers that were once prominent like the Kingston Whig Standard or the London Free Press are virtually like three or four people in the newsroom. What about the, the I don't know, I guess the, the level of intense journalism? With the big, we saw the big movie Spotlight, you know, the big exposés, the investigative heroes. And is that suffering? Like, is that being done? On Is digital journalism as good, you're the prof here, as course, traditional paper journalism? I would argue digital journalism is better it's than better. print because yeah. you can break down stories and you can tell stories components of stories you can tell parts of the stories in the media that best suits it some might be video some might be audio some might be graphics some might be pictures but don't forget spotlight was 2000 yeah, yeah of no, no, but I mean, I, I'm and a Spotlight huge fan. Yeah. yeah, right. But digital is, of course, it's better than yes, print, right? It does and take it's, money. it's it's everything. It's interactive. It has all this space. You can put, you know, links to old speeches. You can do anything, but it takes money, right. and it takes people. And, so, is there less money in the 
the new journalism? Are there fewer? There seems there's fewer journalists. Absolutely. I mean, if they're you're crowdfunding to get your stuff done. I don't know if done. that's entirely well, true. I think yeah, it I'm depends sure. on the outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the, the other thing, and I don't think we talk about it enough, and I've heard the arguments that, that uh, the Internet, anyone can be a publisher, and there are bloggers and podcasters, but the, the thing we don't acknowledge is that a media outlet, a newspaper, has insurance. It has yes. a legal resource mm -hmm. that, that the, the independent players just don't have. And wherever good journalism is happening, and I mean the kind of journalism that makes people uncomfortable, you can bet that the threat of a defamation lawsuit or some other legal action that's meant to stymie that journalism always looms large. And so I think uh, what's happening in terms of those institutions in those lo local markets, it's not a good thing for journalism and, and not a good thing for Canada. But, but uh, I would, I'd add one thing on that, which is that if, if newspapers were to stop publishing news on paper and just go to being digital yeah. publications, the economics change dramatically. You don't have to buy paper, you don't have to buy ink, you don't have to print it, don't you don't have to distribute it. it. So all of a sudden it's a totally different environment. The problem they face though, which is a very difficult problem, that means giving up on their most loyal supporters and saying basically to them, forget it, you guys are, you know, you're not the future. And, and, and there's no guarantee that they're going to be able to replace them with other people. And that's where they're paralyzed. Absolutely. Would you, what do you say to this idea that there's not as much resources put towards serious journalism by even BuzzFeed? I, I mean, I, it's not true. <laughs> it's just, not, it's not true. I mean, there are a lot of uh, web first and web only outlets that have a ton of money to be able to put uh, forward those resources to do big stories. I think BuzzFeed in particular does a lot of uh, long form investigative coverage. They have a huge news team in New York and in uh, the UK. We're building one here right now. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's true. I think it's really easy to say that because it's not like a tangible product that you can hold in your hand and you can feel really warm about and it can feel kind of um, ephemeral, but I mean, that's just not but the it, case. It does come down, Sachi, to the, the revenue model. And BuzzFeed has made a revenue model based on and not trying to build an audience to its owned and operated platforms. It builds an audience to sponsored content. And uh, that is the challenge, I think, that traditional publishers uh, face, is how do you make money in a world where you could go down the route of sponsored content or native sure. content? You could... Uh, but the other challenge, and it's a real challenge, is that... Uh, the best uh, advertisers are, are really, or the best, uh, the people who figured out how to serve an audience um, to advertisers is Facebook and Google. Mm -hmm. And these players are huge right. and they are able to uh, to do things that, that yeah. local operators I've got to cut you off because we have way more to talk about, but we've got to take a little bit of a break. We'll come back and uh, get some last thoughts from everybody. So when we come back, the big question, can print recover or is it dead? Welcome back to our media panel. At the table tonight, Margot Goodhand, Brody Fenlon, Sachi Cole, and Chris Waddell. So we heard all the dire stats. We saw only Sachi was smiling as she saw the advertising <laughs> revenues for digital going up. Everyone else me. was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, well, and everyone's got kind of mixed feelings about what's going to happen on the digital horizon. But let's, we're here to focus on what's happening with newspapers. What's going to happen next? Are more going to bite the dust, more turn to digital? What's, what's, can Absolutely. they be saved? No, I think it's inevitable. I think the decline, you can manage decline so long and then it, it, it goes. But the, the fact the matter is that these aren't as newspapers as Chris was pointing out. They're, they're newsrooms. And if they can find some way to innovate and adapt and work on a digital mode, just like the La Presse or, or like the Toronto Star Touch, <laughs> but you know, get some kind of innovation going, the newsrooms can prevail. You hope that they will prevail. But the newspapers, Ben Franklin, they haven't changed since then. So. Huh. So time for change there. Can they be saved? Should they be saved? Right. Yeah, I think I think you're going to see consolidation, and you'll probably see papers close. And uh, but but I think you'll also see a number of publishers try to figure out strategies and work with partners like Facebook or uh, Snapchat or other uh, big platforms and strike revenue share deals, and maybe end up becoming more of a source of content rather than the place where the content is consumed. What do you think, Sachi? Good writing can exist anywhere, so if they find a way to adapt and make it possible for it to exist somewhere else that isn't reliant on being delivered to someone's home physically, 
then there's a way through. But they just need to do that, which they haven't shown. Not all of them have shown the ability to find a way through. So is more money being spent then digitally? Like as, as the advertising dollars go up in digital news and digital journalism, I mean, is there more money put into actual journalism and investigation? And like, are you getting richer and fatter, <laughs> shall I say? I don't know if more money is being spent, but I think there are more resources available than there are if you work at a traditional paper in some cases, not all the time, but I certainly feel that way. Where do you see this going, Chris? Um, I, think the, I think the challenge they face, Wendy, is that, that when you move away from advertising, you say, well, one way or another, readers or some combination as Brody's talking about, is going to have to start paying the bills, then you break away from the idea that there's one solution for everybody. Because once you're dealing with your audience and having to do, produce a product your audience wants and is willing to pay something for, and I think audiences will pay for news and information if it helps them, then what one publication or one newsroom does to their audience, and the combination of things they'll do, is different than another newsroom. So again, you can't have a one-size-fits-all and you need more creativity on lots of different levels. Some We're already seeing it in the States with some of the things that Facebook has been doing and the things Facebook is talking about doing. That may be somebody's solution. Someone else's solution may be something else. The, the, the challenge for the industry is it's, it's survived on basically one way of running its business uh, for a long, long time. That's true for radio, that's true for television, and it's true for newspapers. Once you say we have to pay a lot more attention to audiences and what they want because we have to be sure they're going to pay for it, then you have to tailor your solution to them. And that's a lot more challenging to come up with. And I think a answers. lot of newspapers actually tend to market themselves to like to older, straight, white yeah. guys. And that is far less interesting. Well, to do. Uh, well it's hardly, also, I've got to cut you off because we're yeah. out of time, but it is fascinating. And it's certainly not the only industry that's facing massive upheaval. So we'll see what happens. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you.